A game I personally have waited over a decade for. And in my personal opinion, it was worth the wait. Now, if you're on the fence about getting Stalker 2, I'm not going to tell you here and now that you should shoot for the moon and get this game. But if you are looking for a challenge in a story rich environment that you can truly lose yourself in, I would 100% hands down recommend Stalker 2. This for me is game of the year. I am somebody who's all about survival, all about world building, choices, skill, firefights, managing your supplies. If you like any of those things, this is the game for you. And the best thing is, as somebody who's come directly from Stalker Gamma, expecting Stalker 2 to not be able to outshine Gamma and not provide the same different plugins and... Okay, I had to take out that zombie real quick. As I was saying, before I was rudely interrupted, stop for a snack really quick. Stalker 2, while it does provide quite a few of different re uh, uh, different plugins and features that we are used to if you come from Gamma or have played Stalker Anomaly before, such as the animations, the fluid backpack opening system, the inventory seems very familiar but new and refreshing. Um, it has it has a lot in it. The only thing that I have to say as a critique for the game is that it seems mutant skinning and mutant gathering of parts it has been completely removed from the game. Almost every bloodsucker I've killed, Snork, uh, Bobcat, all these different things, and I haven't been able to open an inventory on any of them. You're not able to skin them, nothing. They give you a knife. You're able to loot bodies. Man, I heard a howl over there in the distance. Nothing nothing different than what you normally hear in the zone. But those are my few critiques. Is that it's missing plugins. It is missing features. But it makes up for that. And tenfold, I would say. The gameplay is very intriguing. The, the combat is no longer just Hail Mary. Hopefully you hit the headshot. The headshot's the only thing that matters. You can shoot them for 30 times in the body and they won't die. And although I've been playing on Veteran and I can see some of the sponginess if you shoot them in the body repeatedly, it's expected because they're wearing armor. But if you shoot them in the head, it's still just as deadly as it always has been. Headshots are almost an instant kill. Looks like there's a couple of monolithians here are shooting something now. Now, if this isn't as, as stalker as stalker is, look at these guys. They're staring at this mutant directly through the ground. Keep him in your sights. Yeah, you keep him in your sights. You get him. That poor boar doesn't even know what's going on. But the gunplay is extremely fun. It, it's, it's refreshing. It's different. And it, it takes a little bit of skill because the movement is not what you'd expect it, it to be. It's very, uh, it seems like there's inertia, I would say. Uh, especially with your bullets, you have to lead them. And there is proper bullet drop. And it's just not point and click and shoot. If you, even if you spray your gun, you're very unlikely to hit anything. It, it is also very unrecommended to spray anything because you'll just instantly run out of ammo. Ammo is very hard to gun by and you'll break your gun. And if there's one thing that I do not enjoy, it is going to the mechanic to repair your weapons. It will cost you an arm and a leg, but nothing's more important than a working firearm. Now, I don't know where that pig went, but I believe, yeah, I have a couple grenades, so let's just lob one down there. No, nope. it was a little bit short. You must be nearby. Uh, it looks like that's as far as I can throw. Should have done more practice in high school. Anyways, let's gather what little resources are at the top here. 
and be on our merry way. Looks like the way down is right here. <laughs> Having animations for everything really is a game changer, especially if you're just talking Sound with somebody. Stalker has been known for having that giant plastered dialogue window on your screen with several lines of text for you to read. And although that seems to be absent from the game, it's replaced with driven narrative. Uh, the, the voice acting is terrific in Ukrainian and in English. I personally have been playing in English, and that comes as somebody who usually always uses foreign language interpreters because I think English is the last thing you would use to describe somebody from Ukraine. But, I digress. I think that the actors they chose for English uh, have done a terrific job. I love Skiff. I love how he presents himself. And I love the many different characters of the zone, how they, they try to stick with an accent. Although, I've noticed quite a few of them just sound British. But... <laughs> It's not too much of a bother. Uh, I, w I just try to imagine that there's just a lot of British people in the zone because, you know, maybe their country is not going so well and they, they got to come out here for some artifacts, you know, to get some goods and maybe some rights. Come to the zone with a butter knife, eh? <laughs> okay. Jokes aside, this has been a pleasant experience so far. I have been enjoying Stalker 2. And although I've kind of just thrown this video in the deep end, I'm 15 hours into the game so far. Currently doing missions in the Wild Island Zone, going upwards to the Cement Factory, which most people know as Juniper Factory, or pretty sure that's what it is. But anyways, there's the normal, uh, some familiar locations, like the chemical plant being Agriprom. I actually believe it's a little bit different. It's not the same as, as it was in the previous games, such as the lesser zone here. Uh, this would be your cordon, and it, it merges directly into the garbage. And one of my all-time favorite, I, I believe it's because of Unreal Engine 5 that this is possible, but there's seamless transitioning between zones. There's no loading screens. I've found that I've accidentally walked into the ne next level more times than I can imagine. I haven't even been to the burnt forest and I just accidentally walked into the area while walking around the chemical plant. Looks like I have to take a left up here. I was a little bit confused about the direction I should take. It just doesn't look safe. And one trip into the water is just fatal. Immediately fatal. That's all it takes to die. Don't know what that was about, but I suppose I must have the coordinates. This game is beautiful. It's the early hours of the morning here. It's the same in game. Somewhere around 3 to 4 a.m. The zone is quiet. Nocturnal predators are very uh, on the prowl at the moment. So if I am not as talkative, it's because I have my eyes peeled. Looks like this is the area. Oh, someone hurt us. Hold on, brother. Can't close the door behind us. Monolithians. Stalker, help! There's someone, something terrible down there. Shh. Oh, no, stop. I don't want to hear it. It came out of thin air, and everyone at the station lost their mind. They were screaming, hmm. shooting at each other. Only two of us made it out of there. 
That thing still got bluish, though. Quiet. Hush. Shut up. Shut hmm. up. Shut up. Ah! I thought he'd get better if I dragged him away, but he's getting worse. Please kill whatever is hiding down there. I'm begging you. I, I'll give you the code to the stash. <sighs> All right. I'll deal with it. I'll kill this creature. Whatever it is. For real? Thanks. That thing is hiding underground, waiting. There's a safe way to get down there, but only North has the key. He's our supervisor. He must be upstairs. Sometimes he climbs to the roof to get some fresh... One more thing. There are a lot of our men inside. If it wasn't for the thing downstairs, they'd do you no harm. But they're out of their minds now, so take care. Sounds like we're dealing with a controller. Now, this is going to be my first time facing this entity in Stalker 2. I'm very, very excited. That's probably not what you want to hear when going up against a controller. But I know it's going to be a challenge, especially since I'm playing on the veteran difficulty. Which has proven to be quite the challenge for me so far. He's still moaning over there in pain. Alright, let's see what this is about. I believe the controller is somewhere underneath this. Looks like a facility of some sort. I know I'm not sounding exactly like Sherlock Holmes here. But I don't even know what they use this place for. I'm guessing that's one of the zombies. What weapon is it? Is he just holding... Looks like an HK. I'm going to let them be. I'm not really looking to make some enemies right now. And it looks like I can narrowly avoid them. They're positioned in a way to where if I'm careful enough, I won't have to kill anybody. Now there's another one up here. I can't be having him see me at the moment. Might stand no choice. I'd rather save them than, than have them die. I will find that controller. Let's do a quick save real quick. Just because I know what it's like to face a controller. God. That, that boy did not look good. Did not look healthy. Now they say the controller's in the pits. I have to find him. There's just no way the controller's out and out. Oh, that certainly hurt. These zombies are no joke. Truthfully speaking, I shouldn't be avoiding them. But, if I can eliminate this controller and release their minds from its grasp, possibility that I'm willing to take. Even if I'm just running in circles, it seems. Pop an energy drink and head to the next area. It looks like on the mini-map the compass at the top is showing me where I can go. Oh. Listen. Oh, is it down there?
I don't take pride in that. Excuse me. Looks like I have to get on the roof somehow. Looks like it's time for me to make my way out of here. Must be down here. Here goes nothing. <laughs> 